This is a call for an uprising. Welcome to today's show. I'm going to cover this as calmly as I can because it's so important. I want people to share this video. And I know sometimes when people share some of my work, it turns people away in a sense sometimes because I do shout, I do get upset, I do get angry. And a lot of people who aren't awake can't handle jumping into this stuff from yelling and screaming. So this is a message that needs to get out there. And I'm going to show you how they try to finagle this between the fine lines. But this is reported all over the place. This isn't just some fake story that one media outlet reported on. Now, we know the mainstream media is fake news, of course. But this is indeed a real story. Fox News, MSN, you know, New York Post, all these outlets are covering it. And this is something that eventually is going to become normal. And it's scary. A woman has been jailed for baptizing her two-year-old daughter. So let me get this straight. A woman is baptizing her two-year-old daughter, gets prison time. A parent who doesn't allow their two-year-old daughter to choose their gender could have that child taken from them, custody taken away. Do you see what's happening here? The rights of the two-year-old, the individuality All the stuff that they preach and push in every commercial on TV and every show. Empowerment, empowerment, empowerment. This is the world we're living in. Now, they're going to, in these stories, because this is kind of like almost the first of its kind in a sense. I haven't heard a story about a woman going to jail for baptizing a child. They're going to try to twist this in the sense of saying, well... She didn't agree with the father. She had to inform the father of what she was going to do religiously with the daughter. This is stuff that is not even, this this is deliberately planted there, okay? There's many people who have had divorces, who have had custody battles. In the divorce and stuff, there's not much that says, well, there's a, there's an, you know, we're putting in a little loophole here. You can't baptize your daughter or you can't do this. It's a two-year-old daughter. And in this case, a North Carolina mother is serving jail time because she had her daughter baptized. This is what the future holds for all of us. Because they're going to say children are going to be able to have a choice, right? Look how it's starting now. Children are going to have their choice of their gender, which is insanity. A two-year-old, a three-year-old, a four-year-old. A two-year-old can't even talk yet. Well, let's say a child who's four years old, five years old, can complain to authorities or complain to somebody that the parents are forcing Christianity on them or somebody from the outside looking in can say, look, there's this five-year-old kid at school. It's, you know, the kid is just confused. He's constantly talking about Christianity. The parents are forcing it on the child. The child isn't going to grow up to have a good life. We need to get him out of the household because this is forced on the child. The same will be with baptisms. The same will be with anything involving following and leading people to Jesus Christ. This is foretold in prophecy how we are supposed to endure in the end times. We are in the end times. Doesn't mean the world's ending tomorrow. Could be a hundred years from now. Could be five. Could be a day. Could be a week. Nobody knows when the trumpets are going to sound. But we all should have good enough intuition to see what is going on around us. So this woman, Kendra Stocks of Charlotte, is beginning a sentence in jail. Not a slap on the wrist. Not a fine. Jail. There are pedophiles that don't go to jail. There are drug dealers that don't go to jail. Jail for baptizing her own daughter. And they say, well, Stocks had the right performed on her two-year-old daughter in August 2016 in defiance of a judge's order in a custody battle between herself and the father. Right? So the father doesn't, you know, want the child to be baptized. She wants the child to be baptized. And then the court steps in. And who does the court side with? Well, usually you would say, right, the court would side with the mother. Well, in this case, the court sides with the father because we're talking about a baptism. You see, they want children baptized, but they want them baptized in Satanism. They don't want them baptized in Jesus Christ. Now, stories like this are going to become more and more normal. As we go through, you know, this, that's what's going to happen. It's going to become more and more normal. Now, the father, Paul Schaff, was awarded custody of the child. 
So the christening happened one day after the judge gave the father custody, specifically including decisions concerning religion, which is pretty, you know, I, I'm not, listen, I don't have a, a divorce or anything like that on my, uh, in my lifetime here, but I know people who do or who have been divorced and who have had children. And I don't recall things in, in the, you know, the divorce papers that say, because this person has custody of the child, they are, you know, allowed to make religious decisions or whatever they want to deem it. But maybe that is true in a sense. But jail time, jail time for baptizing the daughter. I mean, boy, court documents obtained by the out revealed that both parents are practicing Catholics. OK, we're not going to go down that route, but they're both Catholics. Right. So why then would the father have a problem? Let's find out. And they both wanted the child baptized and raised in the church. But the pair had long disagreed on spiritual matters, delaying the girl's baptism, according to the report. Schaff was never informed about the baptism. The father was never informed and only learned of it when the woman posted photos on Facebook, according to the documents. He then notified the courts. The judge found the woman guilty of contempt and wrote that the mother had acted in bad faith disregard when she failed to notify Schaff of the baptism or give him any role in the ceremony the paper reported. The woman appealed, but the judge's ruling was upheld on Monday with the original sentence of 10 days cut down to seven. A week in jail for this. I mean, this is there's so much crap going on in this world. There's so much scum out there. There's so much filth. There's so many people who need to be jailed. And this is, this is you're getting jailed for this. I mean... What an absolute waste. What a waste of your tax money. She said, I'm scared. I'm sad about what's happened. I don't regret having her baptized. That was in her best interest. I don't see how this is the best interest of the family. Her father is sending her mother to jail. Uh, The father's attorney emphasized that the mother was being punished, not for baptizing her child, but ignoring the judge's order. Look, and you could read between the lines and you could say, well, the story's more about the fact that she went against what the judge said and things like that. But you, listen, this is how they start ingraining this stuff into society, right? Sure, the, oh, it's about the divorce and about the father had custody and he had these decisions made so the mother went against his decisions. But read between the lines of what you're going to see go on here. Little by little, they're going to start conforming people to this type of mindset. Well, you know, both parents have to be on board or it's abuse, right? They'll start with stuff like that. Then it'll be, well, if pa- the parents don't agree with the child, the parents need to lose custody of the child. And it's going to revolve around Christianity or following Jesus Christ because they're going to say parents are forcing this on their children. You know, the story from here will evolve. As more stories like this come out, eventually the narrative will turn into, well, the two-year-old should have a choice if it wants to be baptized. And no, they'll, they'll probably say, well, listen, no kid should be baptized until they can make a decision on if they want to be baptized because of religious freedom. Do you see where this is going? It's exactly where it's going. And you could see all the other things going on in the media around us to prove this. The things with the trans agenda specifically and how children are being allowed to choose their own gender in schools and not notify the parents. They're saying, listen, the child is his own individual. The child is his own you know, empower the child, empower the child. This eventually trickles down into legalizing pedophilia, letting five-year-olds make decisions on dating 40-year-olds. That's what this leads to, right? But it starts with what we're seeing now where the child, well, the child should be allowed to pick his gender. Huh? Uh, What's between his legs, right? Should really just be the answer. But no, the child should be allowed to. It doesn't have to inform the parents, says the school. And if the parents don't agree with it, the state can take the child out of the house, Okay, so this is empowering of children. It's going to come down to this into religion because they're going to go, listen, the child shouldn't have Christianity forced on him. The child should be able to choose what path it wants to go down. And then that's going to lead to parents aren't allowed to teach their children the Bible, remove the Bible from the household. Right. You'll start hearing more and more stories, fake news stories about Christians hating against homosexuality, LGBT, and stuff like that. And they'll start continuing to say how hateful Christians are and bigots they are and how the God of the Bible is bad. This is all stuff that's going to continue to happen as they remove Bibles, as they remove God from the household, because they don't want him there. They don't want you learning about the Bible. They don't want you reading it. They don't want you finding salvation through Christ. 
So it starts with stories like this, where a mother is jailed for baptizing her own daughter because she didn't call the father to agree on it, right? And they were going to make the story about, well, it's not about religion. It's not about Jesus or it's not about Christianity. It's about the fact that she defied the court order. Well, why should the court be involved in something like that? Right? We're giving the rights away to the courts, the state. That should not be happening. And sooner or later, it's going to be, well, the child himself should be able to pick all these things and dictate these things. So no parents should be allowed to baptize their child. No parents should be allowed to raise their child in a Christian household until the child's old enough to make a decision on what he wants to learn about and what religion he wants to follow or whatever. And that's how it's going to go. So it's important to tell people this and make them aware that stories like this are going on out there because stories like this trickle down, right? It goes from MSN, it goes to New York Post, New York News, whatever it's on, all the way around, all the media outlets pick up on it. It plants seeds in people's heads about forcing this on a child, about, you know, what could happen if you force these things on a child. It's not so much about the custody battle. It's seed planting for what is to come. That's how mind control works. That's how they get people on board with stuff, story after story after story through repetition. And it's important for people out there to see that because what's coming next is massive restrictions for all of us on Christianity, how you can raise your kids. And we have to fight back against this. Deeper, deeper, deeper. When you read these stories, look deeper at what they're really trying to say. Because we know that they're trying to strip Christianity from households. They don't want anyone teaching their children this. They want to empower children Okay, because they want to continue. That's why they sexualize children. That's why you see kids on these cooking shows and on these TV shows acting like adults. Because they want to say, listen, a five-year-old, scientists say five-year-olds can think better than 40-year-olds. So shouldn't five-year-olds be allowed to date who they want and make decisions on what they want? And people will just go, yeah, if scientists say so. So five-year-olds suddenly will not be getting raised by their parents. They'll say, well, they don't need parents at five, six, seven years old. They're already developed, Right. And they'll go, oh, okay, so the parents shouldn't be allowed to teach them about Jesus. They shouldn't be allowed to do this. They shouldn't be allowd to do that. The child wants to date a 40 year old. He should be allowed to. I mean, it's going to go that route. It might not be today. It might not be tomorrow, but it's heading there. And people need to be aware of it. That is why they are stripping the rights of the citizens, giving empowerment to the government. Okay. And then they're pushing this individual empowerment stuff where chi- children are choosing this stuff. And this is leading towards legalizing pedophilia. It's scary. It really is. Children need to be protected. They need to be raised in households that preach the Bible, that have them in the word so they can learn about Jesus Christ and they can be born again and find salvation. I thank you for listening to today's show. This world is getting sicker by the day, folks. God bless all of you and your families.